Hey guys, so today I want to talk about philosophy and science and whether philosophy should be considered a science. Now, I was reading Bertrand Russell's The Problems of Philosophy, which is a really, really, really great like introduction to epistemology mainly, theory of knowledge, but just really great introduction to what philosophical thinking is like and um, how to go about um, questioning things and um, a little bit as well of the history of philosophy. So if you want a really approachable text to start your philosophical inquiries with, this is uh, my recommendation. But anyway, I was reading the chapter, The Limits of Philosophical Knowledge. Now, if you have this book and you'd like to open up the book with me, um, I'm looking at page 86, 87, and it's chapter 14. Bertrand Russell begins to discuss the essential characteristics of philosophy and what differentiates them from a science. First, he starts talking about things are only valued as sciences, but the distinct difference between science and philosophy is essentially criticism. Philosophy examines critically the principles employed in science and in daily life. It searches out any inconsistencies there may be in these principles and it only accepts them when, as the result of a critical inquiry, no reason for rejecting them has appeared. He, he goes on to talk about the value of philosophy by discussing why science is valuable to society and in turn why that means that philosophy isn't necessarily so valuable to people who aren't students of philosophy. To start with science, science is valuable to the general public because it involves discoveries and it involves inventions and it involves things that appear in our daily lives that make things more convenient for us, etc. So um, that's one of the reasons that science is really, really valuable to people who aren't scientists. However, philosophy, philosophy is all about um, making yourself more critical and making sure that you're able to approach different topics isn't necessarily useful to people who don't study it. Philosophy is so essential for the sciences to even exist. All sciences started with philosophy. So if you think of biology, biology used to be called natural philosophy um, because it was all about the unknown. We hadn't any idea about what existed in organisms and what exists like how plants functioned and how our own bodies function and so it was a natural sort of philosophy people would inquire and then there would be criticism and there would be evidence and then eventually it became a science it became something that we could be certain of and so at that moment it ceased to be philosophy and that's like the really interesting part in my opinion because as soon as something becomes a science it ceases to be philosophy and so philosophy is destined to never exist within the spectrum of the sciences. However, it is so essential for the sciences to even exist. So it's quite a it's quite an interesting dynamic there. Other examples include astronomy, which used to just be like, you know, stargazing and conceptualizing what um, physics started as atomism in the ancient world. And I think Leucippus and Democritus just had an idea about how the world was constructed. They were like, there must be tiny bodies that are making up these massive bodies that are all interacting with each other. And um, and that became modern day physics. Psychology, which is now still struggling to call itself a science, started as philosophical inquiry into human behavior. And economics started as, you know, philosophers talking about inequality and talking about the markets and talking about trade and talking about exchange. And so everything that we might consider a science at this point in time started as philosophy. And so the really kind of big question for me is what is left within the realm of philosophy? Because it feels like a lot of it has been taken away by science um, and that philosophers don't have as much of um, an array that they can they can still inquire into and they can still criticize. So what is left within the realm of philosophy? Philosophy still is inquiring about consciousness. That's a really, really big one that, you know, is clearly in the hands of philosophers. Um, it's also inquiring about morality. And that's something that I don't think I personally don't think can ever become a science. Moral questions cannot be proven because they're all about um, your values and how you choose to value things and so I don't know if uh, it's even possible to come up with a moral system that is I mean other than the categorical imperative which is kind of the most rational morality that I can think of um, has its problems to the 
common sense uh, human morality and I'm not going to get into that moment but if you're interested I'll leave a podcast below where you can um, listen to something about that so we've got consciousness we've got morality what else exists within the realm of philosophy um, I'm not sure but I think the value of philosophy is not in the answers and this is something Bertrand Russell makes the point about at the very end of this chapter which is something I fervently believe as well I think the point of philosophy and I, I think I've touched on this in a previous video the point of philosophy is to expand the horizons in which we can think and it's not about um, reaching determinate truths even though whenever we have reached truths they have like sustained have become sciences and thus have removed themselves from the realm of philosophy but philosophy was used to reach them and so it's in some sense it, it can be possible to reach these truths with philosophy but the the central idea that i want you to take away from this is philosophy isn't about the reaching of the truth it's about asking the right questions and it's about um, coming to conclusions about them about our own knowledge and limitations of our knowledge and all that fun stuff philosophy connects us to the bigger questions rather than the answers of reality to enrich our intellectual imagination and to enlarge our conception of what is possible i could not have said that any more eloquently that is russell at his best so what is the point of philosophy you might be asking yourself if it's never going to become a science if it's always going to be inquiry well it's it's first of all it's thought juice as i like to call it and as bertrand russell called it in this book it is mind food um it is it is nourishing your mind um and second of all it is anti-dogmatism and dogmatism is the enemy of not only philosophy but of science um and so if you're going to take anything away from this it is you know philosophy isn't a science but it is essential to science and uh that philosophy is valuable and that might be a whole other video that you can keep an eye out for I really hope this was semi-coherent. I really hope you guys go pick up the problems of philosophy if you are new philosophers. Bertrand Russell is just always the person to go to. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one soon.